Hi, I'm Mark from the Microtosca project. Today we're going to be looking at the high speed ports on the IMX RT106X. So taking a look at the block diagram of this chip, we'll find that it has standard GPIOs. They are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And then they also have the high speed GPIOs, which are called GPIO 6, 7, 8 and 9. Now these are exclusively available on the 106X at the moment. The other chips, they just have the standard ones. Now, the interesting part of these is, as it says here, they are tightly coupled GPIOs operating at the same frequency as the ARM core. So, let's see just how fast they are, shall we? However, before making some measurements, we need to understand a little bit how these things work, because they are actually multiplexed between two ports. I'll take an example of GPIO1. Now, GPIO1 is the standard speed port which is clocked by the IPG clock root. Now this also has a clock gate, so it can be powered down. GPIO6 is clocked by the core clock, which cannot be powered down, which means it's all, always clocked. Now only one of these can actually be connected to a pad at one time. Now anybody already working with the IMX RT parts knows that we have multiplexing, which means that pads and pins can be connected either to GPIOs or other functionality. In the case of the standard speed ports and the high speed ports, every one of these bits can be chosen to either be coming from the standard GPIO, as shown here, or switched over to the fast GPIO. These two bits cannot actually be connected to the pin at the same time. The control is done by the register IOM MUX C GPR GPR26 in case of these two ports. GPIOs 2, 3 and 4 can be then multiplexed between GPI 7, 8 and 9s. Now that we have this background information, there's nothing stopping us to looking at some code which I'm going to use to measure the performance. First of all, I've defined a port which I'd like to use. This happens to be accessible easily on the board's pins. I use the first Microtask and Macro to configure this test output on GPIO port 6 and starting it in its high state. Now, because this is a fast port, I've also been careful to define the fastest slew rate. Afterwards, I toggle this port a few times. This follows by a short one microsecond delay. This will help us when we look at the logic analyzer recording later. Afterwards, I reconfigure this pin to be connected as an output, the same pin, but this time on GPIO1, which is the standard speed port. Again, I toggle this port a few times and follow it by a small one microsecond delay. The final part of the test is I configure this output between GPIO6 and GPIO1. Now, as we saw in the diagram previously, when I configure a pin to be on GPIO6, it is then connected to the fast port. If not, it's connected to the slow port. Now, because of the two ports having their own set of registers, it actually means that this will switch the output between these two states, which were left in the port the last time they were used. What I should mention here is that you do not see any control in the Microtasker macros directly of controlling the register which multiplexes each single bit between GPIO1 or GPIO6, or in case of the other ports between their two respective ports. But this is included and automated in these port configuration macros that means as long as I define one of the fast ports rather than one of the standard speed ports, it will automatically do the switch over for me. So that is the complete code that I need to configure and also um, realize my test.
Before running this on the final hardware, I'm going to first run it in the Microtasker simulator where we can see this operation here. Now this is important and interesting because it allows me to very easily overview how these fast and standard ports are used. The rules are the following. When a pin on one of the GPIO 1, 2, 3 or 4 ports, the standard ones, uh, is not selected, they will appear as not used. If you look in the bottom left here, it will say that it's MUX to fast GPIO6. And then I can look at the GPIO6 fast ports and I can see that this pin has been transferred over here. And also you see down the bottom that all of the pin multiplexing possibilities are shown as normal. And if you remember, a part of my test was to move between the two ports. And what we can see here is, and also later when we look at the logic analyzer recording, is that between these tests which I'm making, the port is actually being switched. So here we can see that this is taking place very obviously, and that will help us greatly for our first verifications that everything has been set up correctly, and also is running as we anticipated. So it looks good, nothing stopping us going onto the hardware. Here we see the logic analyzer recording of this pin output. Initially we can see the slow toggling due to the test being called periodically. So let's have a zoom in and see what happens exactly when these ports were toggled at fast rates. As you can see here, we toggle this so that there are three pulses high. Here we can see the three pulses high, and we can see at a rate of approximately 160 megahertz being generated on this port output. These are, of course, the fast ports, because getting a rate like that on standard ports is pretty impossible. Then we see our one microsecond delay, which allows us to nicely separate this and then we can get to the slow port or the standard port setting where again we do three pulses high. In fact, three pulses low if we look at it correctly. And here we see the typical sort of GPIO rate which we expect from standard GPIO ports of around about 19 megahertz. Finally, we go to the switching and that proves to us, as we can see here, that when we toggle between the two ports, then the last port state in each of the port register is then set to the output pin. Just reminding us from the simulation, we see here that we have a core clock speed of 600 megahertz and we have an IGP clock rate of 150 megahertz. So I hope you agree with me that achieving over 150 megahertz toggling rate on these fast ports is quite an achievement. And also, the code which we needed to do it is very simple in the Microtasker project. Many thanks for watching and good luck with your own work using high-speed GPIOs on the IMX RT106X.